Welcome to Historical. I'm your host, Bradbury Strumworth. Up until recently, I had been the shaper of young minds, but the university and I have come to a disagreement on what constitutes appropriate academic subjects and what constitutes appropriate interpersonal conduct. But my motto has always been, history is very dry. Let's make it wet. Hmm. Nevertheless, my grandson has informed me that there's a website called YouTube where I can upload my lessons and any Minecraft tutorials I want to make in the future. I don't know what those are, but he did finish the statement with Hoya, which he has come to be doing a lot lately, but he says with such confidence, I dare not question it. And to my wife Linda, if you're watching this, please come back. The microwave is very confusing. Today, for our first episode, I shall be exploring a few humorous stories from the Emerald Islands next door. As apart from their usual exports of whiskey, domestic abuse, and apparently crack cocaine, they also specialize in tomfoolery and shenanigans. Oh, wait, hang on one sec. Is it okay to say shenanigans? Hmm. Though many think of shenanigans as harmless pranks of behavior, most dictionary definitions give them a slightly evil cast. Oh, apologies. They specialize in just tomfoolery. I don't want to offend the mix. Our first story... Hang on, let me get my crayons. Our first story takes us to County Clare in 1773, when a little girl by the age of 14 called Anne Mulligan went over to a friend's house to play Roblox, and for some reason completely left out of all primary sources, she lost her voice entirely. A reason that I am left only to wildly speculate as to why. Could it be that women in rural Catholic Ireland never really had a voice, and this story is an allegory highlighting how the strict patriarchy subjugated women and girls for millennia? Or a spooky ghost took us? If you ask this old so-and-so, the latter. Whatever the reason, little Anne was without a voice until 1777, then being the age of 18 and probably having lots of opinions about stuff and things, and no way of communicating. Big sad. Mmm, see, she's frowning. It was then she was brought to see the mad Dr. Connell. It's not said why he was mad, but considering it's the late 17th century, it's probably because he washed his hands. And that's mental. The mad Dr. Connell sat her down and sat across from her. He proceeded to make crazy faces and distorting his features in a shocking manner unsettling the girl until he lunged at her with a knife and started screaming you fucking bitch i'm gonna cut your head off and piss down your throat and she was all like oh god no please and he was like that'll be 25 pounds because back then ireland won't have entered the eurozone for another 225 years hmm and what was the takeaway from all that fuck knows next story this next tale is apparently more of a parable of significant importance to the Gaelic identity. With that in mind, I'm going to read it directly as it is written in the primary source. I'm not going to paraphrase anything so as not to offend the Irish. This is the legend that stands head and shoulders above the entire Gaelic mythical pantheon. Makes me want to take my panties off. That's how sacrosanct this is. Okay. Once upon a time, there was a man going through a field. He was a shoemaker, and he had a ball of wax in his pocket. He saw a hare, and he threw the ball of wax at it, and it stuck to the hare's head. The hare ran away, but she did not go very far until she stopped. Another hare came along and sat down beside her, and it stuck to the wax also. Neither of the hares could run away, so the man got the two of them. This is the best day of my life. <sighs> really makes you think. Right, let's lighten the mood and finally let me regale you with a hilarious tale of friendship and mirth from a silly little organization called the IRA. This is a reminder to take your penis medication. Uh, thank you, Alexa. You're welcome. Alexa, th Alexa, thank you. You are so welcome. This is a reminder to take your penis no, medication. Alexa, you don't have to mention the Viagra. Turning off camera. No, no, 